Hello. In this poster, I'd like to present some work in progress towards tackling what I think is the holy grail of rock magnetism, which is the micromagnetic modelling of the multi-vortex state in particles that have complex and realistic geometries, such as shown here in this particle, a detrital particle from a marine sediment that contains dendritic inclusions of uh, magnetite. And the multi-vortex state is a very general term to describe particles with sizes that are intermediate between those of the single vortex state and those that have the multi-domain state. And a good way of thinking about these particles is, is in terms of the number of remnant states that each particle can adopt. So in the simplistic case, if we have uniaxial single domain, there are two remnant states that a particle can adopt, up or down. If we go to, say, a uniaxial single vortex state, that number of states might increase to, say, four, corresponding to uh, the vortex core pointing up and down and the volume spins rotating either clockwise or anticlockwise. In the case of a multi-domain particle, you have a continuum of magnetization states that are accessible, accommodated by continuous movements of, of domain walls. And in the multi-domain, the multi-vortex state, sorry, uh, we're talking about particles that have hundreds, maybe even thousands of available remnant states, a finite number uh, separated by uh, energy barriers in between these. And that defines a complex energy landscape that we need to define and explore in order to predict the behavior of these states. And these are, are arguably some of the most important remnant carriers in, in natural samples. To get a sense of this complex energy landscape, we start by looking at uh, the remnant states available to a given particle. So these are performed by uh, from a random starting point, performing an energy minimization using micromagnetics, and then plotting out the remnant vectors that result from that. And that defines a cloud in magnetization space. And the red points here are saturation isothermal remnant magnetizations. So you can see the range of magnetization states that can be adopted, but which ones are thermodynamically most favorable, and how do you explore this energy landscape hopping from state to state over the energy barriers that exist there. To do this, we use the formalism of um, disconnectivity diagrams, and this is the standard way of representing these complex energy landscapes in, say, molecular chemistry, where they're used to um, explore things like protein folding and the topology of the energy uh, landscape. So looking at our sorts of particles, we can begin to get a sense of what the energy landscape might look like. In here, for example, we can see individual uh, clusters of remnant states uh, with potentially large energy barriers in between them, uh, but potentially much smaller energy barriers that allow you to explore within that cluster. And that's the challenge that we have. Now, we're really just at the beginning of exploring the properties and the nature of these energy landscapes, but we can start to get some insights uh, uh, in terms of, for example, the height of the energy barrier versus the change in magnetization in between the available states. And this is really going to help us. But we're at an early stage with this, and I really look forward to discussions with people at the poster session to see how we can, as a community, start to solve some of the major technical issues in, in, in uh, approaching the multi-vortex state in this way.